Hi, I'm Michael. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how to program the Elegoo car to chase down a ball. For that, I flipped the camera module down in order to see the floor better. Let's see what I did. First, I would like to disclose that in, this, in the previous episodes, my dad helped me a lot with math and coding. Here's the diagram of the problem. As the first step, I need the car to determine if there is a green ball in the camera view. Then, I need to find the ball coordinates relative to the car and estimate the trajectory to the ball. Then, I need to calculate the wheel speeds for the car to follow the trajectory. I have three coordinate systems in this problem. The Cartesian coordinates of the ball in the camera image, the Cartesian coordinates of the ball on the floor, and the polar coordinates of the ball on the floor. After detecting the ball in the image, I need to find the ball coordinates in the image and then convert them to the ball coordinates on the floor. I need the polar coordinates of the ball on the floor to estimate the trajectory to the ball. There is a part of the floor close to the card that is invisible to the camera. There is also the line of horizon, which limits the ball possible location in the image. I need to take all of that into account. First, I need to detect the ball in the image captured by the camera. I will do that by filtering the image by the color of the ball in the HSV color space. HSV stands for Hue, Saturation, and Value. Hue determines the color in degrees from 0 to 180. Saturation determines the amount of gray in the color. Value determines the brightness. For the ball that I picked, the upper and lower bounds of the HSV code of its color are shown here. These values depend strongly on the lighting conditions. I will modify the function capture that I created in the second episode of the series to implement the ball detection. First, I will blur the image captured by the camera to reduce noise. Then, I will convert the image into the HSV color space and apply the HSV color filter to create a mask that keeps only the shapes of the ball's color. Then, I will reduce the white noise and smooth the edges of the shapes by applying erosion twice and then dilation twice. Then, I will detect the contours of these shapes. Next, I will go through each contour and determine its center and area. I will ignore the contours that are above the line of horizon. Among the remaining contours, I will select the one with the largest area. There will be false detections of the ball. At first, I try to fit circles to all contours and keep only those contours that had the fitting error below a certain threshold. That only made the code slower without improving its ball detection performance much. Also, the perspective distortion of the camera lens made the ball look like an ellipse closer to the image edges, which introduced large fitting errors. Undoing the lens distortion to preserve the ball's circular shape and fitting circles to all the contours complicated the task and I decided not to do that and instead detect the ball simply by its color and area. The next step is to determine the ball position on the floor relative to the car based on the coordinates of the ball center in the image. I needed to create a geometric model of how the ball position on the floor translates to its coordinates in the image. The math was above my level and my dad helped me a lot in creating this model. For those interested in the derivations, they are shown here. The models for the dx and dy coordinates of the ball on the floor use four parameters that I estimated from experiments. In these experiments, I placed the ball in various positions relative to the car, measured the ball dx and dy coordinates on the floor and x and y coordinates in the image. Then I fitted the derived models using the Excel solver. The results are shown here. While fitting the models for the ball position, I noticed that besides the perspective distortion, the camera lens was introducing a barrel distortion on the left side of the captured image. I had to add an additional correction factor to the models. The code for computing the ball position on the floor from its coordinates in the image is shown here. I included it in the capture function. The capture function returns four values. The flag ball, indicating if the ball is present in the image. The distance to the ball, and the angle to the ball in radians and degrees. The next step is to estimate the trajectory of the car to the ball using the distance and the angle to the ball returned by the capture function. I decided that the trajectory is going to be a turn of the radius calculated from the ball, distance, and angle. Because the wheels on the Elegoo car cannot be steered, the only way to make a turn is by setting different speeds on the left and the right wheels. So, I needed to derive the ratio of these speeds based on the desired turning radius. The math level of this problem was above my level, and my dad helped me a lot. For those interested in derivations, they are shown on the screen. While experimenting with the car, I noticed that the left and the right motors had different speeds even if they were set equal. This made the car to deviate from the straight line. In my case, the car was leading to the right. I also noticed that even if I set the right or left motors to zero speed, the corresponding wheels travel some distance, which made the turns to be wider than estimated. I called this effect speed coupling. 
a faster wheel drags a slower wheel, which in turn slows down the faster wheel. To include this effect in the model, each speed had an error term proportional to the difference of speed between the left and the right wheels. The final model for the speed ratio as a function of the turning radius is shown here. It uses three parameters that can be estimated from experiments. To keep the car moving at a constant speed when going straight or making a turn, I set the limit on the maximum speed of the wheels. So, if the car must take the left turn, its right wheels are kept at the maximum speed while the speed of the left wheels is reduced. If the car must take the right turn, its left wheels are kept at the maximum speed while the speed of the right wheels is reduced. I used separate models for the left and right turns with a total of six parameters that needed to be estimated from the experiments. In these experiments, I first set the wheel speed ratio to some value and let the car travel with that speed ratio for a few seconds. Then, I observed where the car stopped and placed a ball there. Then, I returned the car to the initial position and let its camera capture the distance and the angle to the ball from that position. I recorded the distance and the angle to the ball and the speed ratio in an Excel table. After conducting several such experiments for different speed ratios, I fitted two speed ratio models, one for the left turns and one for the right turns, using the Excel solver. The results are shown on the screen here. I created a separate function called trackball to calculate the wheel speeds to make the turn of the desired radius to reach the ball. The code is shown here. The models for the wheel speed ratio versus the desired turning radius don't have to be very accurate because the car will constantly capture images and adjust its trajectory based on the new position of the ball in the captured images. Besides the measurement and fitting errors, the accuracy of the actual trajectories depend on such factors as blurriness of the images captured by the moving car and the battery charge level. To set different speeds of the car wheels, I added an additional command to the CMD function created in the previous episode. I used the existing command number 4 in the communication protocol. This command sends two values to the car's controller, the speed for the right wheels and the speed for the left wheels. I pass these speeds in the list at. Next, I created a new code for obstacle avoidance. Instead of selecting a new direction of the largest distance to an obstacle, I wanted the car to find a ball and choose the direction towards it if the distance to an obstacle in that direction exceeds the threshold dist underscore min. I created a new function called find ball shown on the screen. After the car detected an obstacle and stopped, the car would rotate its head three angles, straight, right, and left. At each rotation angle, as before, the car would detect the distance to an obstacle, but it would also capture an image that would detect the presence of a ball. If the ball is found, the car would rotate its head in the direction of the ball to measure the distance to an obstacle in that direction. If this distance is larger than dist underscore min, then the car would rotate its whole body in the direction of the ball and move in that direction. If no ball is found, the car would rotate its body 180 degrees to face away from the obstacle and rotate its head again to look for a ball. Rotating the car in place to the desired orientation can be tricky because it requires a consistent speed, which we don't have. This speed depends on the battery charge level and the wheel traction, so there is a lot of variation in the car orientation after its rotation in place. The main part of the code looks very simple thanks to the use of functions. I start by rotating the car head straight. Then, I execute the find ball function. After that, I start an infinite while loop inside of which I first check if the car was lifted off the ground, then execute the track underscore ball function, then measure the distance to an obstacle, and stop the car if the distance is below dist underscore min. After stopping, I execute the find underscore ball function and repeat the whole cycle again. Let's see how the code works. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next episode.